All right, cheers everyone and thanks for joining in and I wish you all a very happy coming holiday, a very merry coming Christmas, a happy new year and lots of amazing quality vacation time. So, yeah. And, merry uh, Christmas to you too. Happy, happy holiday. Thank you. And I don't know what your plans are, but I'm so grateful that you took your time to watch the self-concept workshop and came up with a few questions for things that maybe I need to clarify, some gray zones, some questions that you may have, and this way that we can all talk and hopefully answer them. Um, so who's going right. to you know, be the brave maybe, one? <laughs> okay. I will let you ask first. Thank you. I, I fell <laughs> in the church. Um, so... Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I've uh, watched the workshop and I've been following your videos for over a year now, actually, and they've helped me a lot with my self-concept, but lately I've been struggling more with that again, and it's because of a specific thing I got going in my life. Um, and basically, there is a female friend that I like, and I... Expre I express that I like her romantically to her, you know, right? But she made it clear that she would rather we just stay as friends. And I am at an impasse because I feel like if I just settle for that, it would damage my self-concepts a lot and be harmful to me. But if I just keep pursuing it, I'm a, a really toxic guy and I don't want to do that either. So I'm kind of lost and then seeking your advice. Yeah, it's, that's pretty self-aware of you. Uh, have you been friends with her for a while? Yeah. All right. So uh, the one thing that I want to commend you on also right away is that a lot of people will be in denial to themselves. A lot of people will start off from a point where they don't want to see reality for what it is. And they say, no, she wants to be more than friends with me, but it will happen after the studies. But she doesn't realize all of these feelings that she has for me in the moment and what I'm seeing you doing absolutely correctly and you have the the capacity and you have the caliber in order to be able to do that obviously is that you are capable of starting from a point of seeing reality exactly for what it is and you have the capacity to recognize an excuse when you hear one because you know perfectly well that if somebody is really idealizing you, is really dreaming about you, is really hoping for a chance at a romantic relationship with you, then they aren't going to tell you, oh no, let's just stay friends. But you also have to understand that life is a river, it's ever changing, it's ever flowing, it's not permanent. And you, once you start mastering your self-concept, what you can do is you can choose how it's going to shift, how it's going to mold itself, how the future is going to unfold for you, including in this relationship. Now, I, I don't want to convey to you the idea that you can control other people, that you can control their choices, their thoughts, their vibrations, but you can control the outcomes for yourself. So what I'm trying to say here is, you, I assume, have been a good friend to her. You have been there. You have been present for her emotionally. And I'm sure you succeeded knowing, you know, what you've been saying. I think that uh, she has gotten a little bit accustomed to that. And we tend to tell ourselves as people that I have to always be present for a person so as not to lose them from my life, so that I can look at them all the time, so that I can hear their voice all the time, so that I don't miss out on a chance with them in the future. But the only way that we can get another person to really reevaluate what opportunity our energy has brought onto them, our friendship has brought onto them, is to withdraw what we've been giving. And what you've been giving her is the most valuable thing that you can give to another person. It's your attention. Your attention, your focus, your energy, your high concept, your idealization of her. So what happens if you choose to take that away and to withdraw that from her is that suddenly she starts feeling like there is an absence where presence used to be. She used to have something that she doesn't have right now. And there is no bigger move that you can make in order to make somebody, in order to make a girl, reassess what you actually mean to her. To say, you cannot take me for granted. You cannot assume that I'll always be there for you, hoping that you choose me in the future. You made it clear to me 
that you don't see me as best option at this moment in time, whether you have someone else in mind or not. But you know what? I disagree with you. I know that I am the best option. I do choose me. I do value me. I do see what I am worth as a romantic partner. And let me tell you, you're missing out on this. And then you recognize that what is happening now it's basically the manifestation of your past beliefs, of your past self-concept, of your past momentum. And as you take your attention away from her, as you take your energy away from her, you have to bring them back onto you and you have to use them and start questioning yourself. What beliefs did I hold? What behaviors did I engage in that allowed me to create a concept of myself as somebody who could potentially not be chosen as best option in love? What what can I change in terms of my belief system, in terms of my mental processes, in terms of my emotional processes, in terms of the way that I choose me, I value me, I support me, I go to great lengths to be there for myself and therefore I do not accept less than from other people. So what you're creating is a win-win. On the one hand, you're allowing her to feel the absence of you and your attention, your support, your energy, and therefore reevaluate what you mean to her. And on the other hand, you're bringing it back to you and saying, I will use this to shift, to mold, to create a reality that is more favorable to me. And this reality is either going to involve you coming back and offering me more because I deserve more from you, or it's going to involve my shifting my self-concept in such a way that somebody who ends up being a lot better for me, a lot more appropriate for me, a lot uh, more capable of making me happy shows up in my reality and I lose interest in you. And you have to keep in mind at first, it might be painful. It's not going to be easy for you to give up somebody that you've been present in their life a lot. You've been idealizing them a lot. You've been attached to them emotionally. They have been your mental companion for quite some time, but it's like a habit. You take it one step at a time. You don't suppress the pain. You allow yourself to feel the pain and then you occupy your life with things that will help you shift your self-concept to a more favorable one in love. You occupy your life so that you don't feel an absence. You don't feel this, um, hole in your life that you can't fill with her yourself and you need to fill it with something you need to convince yourself that you are a person that is abundant that has a rich life that has a lot of interests that shows up for himself this way it will be easier for you to start letting go of the outcome of this relationship D does that make sense uh yeah i think it does so you're you're saying that i got so hung up on her that I need to detach myself and make myself more emotionally independent. And once I do that, then maybe she'll also reevaluate what I meant to her to begin with. Is that correct? Yeah, sort of. I, I'm saying you shouldn't accept less than what you actually want. You should be true to yourself. And being true to yourself um, means ac acknowledging to yourself that what you actually want isn't just a friendship. You're not disinterested here. What you actually want is not to be friend zoned. What you actually want is this person as a partner and not settle, not accept less than because you feel like you're worth it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. That was very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anybody else break okay. here? Oh, can I be the next one? Go for it. Uh, so I have been watching your videos for a period of time. And I have a question. And I believe that um, you are the only one who can answer it. <laughs> so uh, the thing is that uh, my... <coughs> My feelings and my mood are inconsistent. They are changes rapidly, and I can't control them. Um, like my whole day can be ruined uh, without visible reason, uh, and I d don't know what is the reason and how I can solve this problem. And do you think that these changes in your mood, are they the result of changes in your thought patterns? Are they the response of you shifting from a very negative state of mind to a very positive state of mind? Or is it something else? Maybe it is. 
like do you, do you have wide mood swings that are related to what you're thinking about yourself mm, um <clears throat> uh, yeah like okay mm, yes Okay, so uh, here's two, two things that I would focus on, right? The first one is uh, it looks like there is a bit of a source of anxiety in your life. And it's probably a source of anxiety that you are not processing, that you are suppressing. You're not connecting to these feelings and these emotions. And it's not that you're supposed to identify with these feelings and emotions, but you are supposed to feel them and you are supposed to release them by feeling them. And one of the best ways to do this is to use breath work. When you use deep breathing, when you use steady breathing, when you engage in any kind of athletic activity that allows you to breathe in a consistent pattern, to breathe deep, to breathe hard, it's going to help manage states of anxiety. For example, if you go for swims, if you spend a lot of time underwater, that is going to help you balance out your mood. And you will feel very different after half an hour swim, after a one hour swim when you come out. Now, there is a second possibility here too, because... Um, People believe that we're separate entities. I believe that because I have my body and you have your body, that means that I um, do not know what is going on through your head. I don't know what you're feeling at the moment, but that is not true because you are vibration, you are energy, you are swimming in a sea of a vibration and you are swimming, you're, you're a wave in an ocean, you're a wave in an ocean of humanity, you're a wave in an ocean of God and you're always connected to that ocean. For example, has it ever happened to you that you go for a walk in the park and every time that you turn down a certain road, you have the same thinking pattern, you think about the same things? Um, yeah, I think there is. Yeah, and you know why that happens? It's because you have a very strong uh, resonance. Patterns. Yeah. It's because you, you have a very strong resonance with yourself. So when you leave a vibrational imprint somewhere and then you go back to that place, you start resonating with your own vibrational imprint. And on top of that, there is visual triggers. So you're kind of picking up on it. And what could be happening with you is that you left a lot of emotional imprints or somebody else that you're living with left a lot of emotional imprints in the place where you're living or you are resonating with a friend, a family member, a transgenerational pattern that you're picking up on. And in that case, if you feel like these emotions that you're picking up on aren't necessarily yours, <clears throat> the reason that you're having this uh, resonance isn't just a similitude that exists between you and these other people, but it's also because you have the caliber, you have the capacity to heal that. Because <clears throat> at this moment in time, you are embodying enough information, enough knowledge, enough resilience, enough strength. At the moment, you are being enough of a channel of love in order to be able to release this, in order to be able to feel it, to transmute it, to give it a different interpretation, and in order to be able to transcend it, not just for yourself, but for the spirit that is sending you this energy, because love transcends all things, love heals all things, love can release all things. And right now what you're getting is you're getting an energy petition from a spirit that is asking you to be love in this moment in time. Um, and you, you shouldn't resist it. You should know that the reason that it's coming to you is because you have the strength and you have the capacity to release this. Yeah? Does that does that make sense? Uh, yeah, you you, you give me a, like, a lot of food for thought. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be scared of these patterns. These patterns are exactly the way that they're supposed to be. You should just uh, be the swimmer in the waves navigating how you handle this. Yeah. Okay. I'm so uh, I, I have nothing to say. <laughs> okay, any, anybody else have uh, any follow-up questions? Yeah, I guess it's my turn. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for all you're doing. You're doing well. Keep going. Thank you. 
So um, I have questions. Um, you talked about self-concept a lot, but uh, I'm confused because I don't understand if it's the same as the law of assumption. Is it, is it the same things or um, what's, the, what's the relationship if it's the different things, you know? Okay, so uh, let me give you uh, the law of assumption the way that I see it, right? The way that I see the law of assumption is that as I assume so it shall be done unto me, as I assume I have it now in this moment of time, that is actually what is going to come about and that is actually what is going to happen. But what is your self-concept? Your self-concept is your assumptions and your beliefs about yourself. So basically you're not trying to assume that reality is a certain thing. Why? Because reality is dense. Reality takes a while to shift because you cannot directly control other people. They have a lot of other energies that are affecting them. You can either resonate with them or not resonate with them. So you take the one ingredient that you can control. What is the one ingredient that you have control, that you have power over? It's you, right? And so when you are working on your self-concept, you are saying, I embrace the law of assumption, among other things as well, my soul's plan. I embrace that as I believe I have it right now, as I believe I am right now, so it shall be done unto me. And I'm going to focus on it from the standpoint of what is under my control, what I can change, mold, and shift. I am a character. I am a character in a play. And I get to choose what kind of character I want to be. For example, if I choose to be a king, then I am capable of making the kind of choices, the kind of decisions, having the kind of expectations and taking on the kind of responsibilities that a king would, but a commoner wouldn't. Most other people would not be capable of doing that. And if I consistently act as a king, I convince myself that I am a king, that eventually a reel or a movie has to start playing in my reality that resonates with my assumption that I am a king. So you are not denying reality. You're not saying um, my neighbor Peter is a king and insisting that they are when they could be rejecting that. You're saying this is the kind of character that I am. And through that kind of character, through that kind of self-concept that I am choosing, my world concept is going to adapt to that because the things that I resonate with are going to be attracted to that. Now, I don't know if this is something that you're struggling with, but where a lot of people get taken aback is the pendulum effect. It's one of the hermetic principles, which is the measure to which the pendulum swings to one side will be the measure to which it swings to the other side. So when you are saying, I am a certain thing, you will see immediately a lot of evidence coming in that says you are indeed, but you will also get an equal amount of evidence that says, no, you're not. Look at this. Look at that. Did you expect that problem to come your way? And so what you do that then is you don't react to it. You don't emotionally feed into that. You see reality for what it is. You see the contrary evidence. You see the problems. If you need to take actions to resolve them, you do. But you also tell yourself, but this is an exception. This is an anomaly. This is not normal for me because I am a king and kings don't get treated that way. This doesn't happen to them. Why? Because reality is moldable, right? It shifts. Reality is our mirror and our reflection. It shows to us what we're being in the moment. It shows to us what our vibration, where our energy, where our beliefs are. But you can see how the world has changed over the centuries, over the millennia, over the years. Why is it changing? Because the things inside of the world or that the world is inside of are beginning to shift. And so you can shift the world as well. You can shift the mirror as well. You say reality is this now, but it doesn't have to stay this. And I'm going to guide where it's going towards with my self-concept. Does that make sense? Yeah, pretty much. Thanks. Sure. You, ha you haven't asked anything. Do you have any questions? Hi, um, sorry. I had this question since the, the start, like when the first guy you were answering this question. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, um, you're saying that uh, at the first few days when you're leaving her,
Uh, you haven't asked anything. Do you have any questions? Hi, um, sorry. I had this question since the, the start, like when the first guy you were answering this question. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, um, you're saying that uh, at the first few days when you're leaving her or like going to change yourself, uh, that you have to go through like some sad days and all that. But like, isn't there any way to avoid that negativity? See, <clears throat> you have to be, sorry, uh, my voice, you have to be careful about avoiding the negativity. You, you shouldn't identify with the negativity, but you should feel it. You should acknowledge its existence. You should allow it as an observer, not as somebody that goes ahead and identifies with the negativity. You should be a passive observer that acknowledges it. It's, it exists. There is uh, opposition. There is a contrary opinion. There is some pain, but I am not necessarily going to suffer as a result of that pain. Why do you do that? Because when you suppress it or when you avoid it, it is a form of resistance. And it is a form of passive resistance to what reality is. And what you resist persists. Because what you resist, you are strengthening. It's one of these things that it even happens with your body where if you have a big pain in your life and you're not acknowledging that pain, you're avoiding that pain, you are not thinking about that pain, eventually it gets uh, stored in your chest, for example, right? And uh, because that pain is in your chest and because it's stored there, you start avoiding that area of your chest because you don't want to feel the pain. So you lock it in there and you focus on other parts of your body more. And then the kind of prana, the kind of life force that you are directing isn't directed to the same extent to, to that part of your chest. And what eventually happens is that you can get some kind of illness, God forbid, or you can get some kind of disease happening there. And in order to be able to transcend that, you need to reconnect to that part of your body. You need to be able to feel it, not to identify with it, to observe it, to observe it from a point of neutrality, where you do not judge it for being pain. And observing it from a point of neutrality, you release it. You allow it to leave. You allow it to go. You say, this is not what I choose for myself, but I acknowledge that it exists in the moment because I am not going to feed this, the energy of my passive resistance. Yeah. It, it makes sense? Yeah, thanks. Sure. All right, guys. Uh, what, what do you think? Does that help clarify a little bit the, the workshop and the concepts there? Yeah, yeah it does. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for clarifying my question. Sure. At the Thanks so much for, Thanks for the help. Thanks for being brave enough here to join in and to ask. I appreciate it.